Today is a new day. Doesn't matter what you've done, the Lord can forgive you. God wants to change our hearts before He changes our circumstances. I believe that God is going to bring peace in a broken world through you. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Hour of Power and thanks for your support to us. Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. It's time for 2023 Hong Kong special. This year, we choose Arise Hong Kong as our theme. As we know, over the past three years, Hong Kong has faced the pandemic. There were many challenges and difficulties in the aspects of our society, economy, and mental health, etc. We had confronted great difficulties. Now that the pandemic has passed, it's time to arise. Therefore, our power is now with you. Arise Hong Kong, not only by our strength, but to rely on the power of our Lord Almighty, to rely on our God to give us strength and blessings. Therefore, this year, we chose the verses from the Bible to be the scripture for this special. It is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 31. The verse is, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. We wish that this Bible verse be a blessing to each one of us. On this Hour of Power special, we have invited many good friends to share their experiences at different stages of their lives. Even they have faced many difficulties, their lives are still arising. They are lawyers, educators, pastors, professionals. They care for the grassroots and the homeless. You can see the love of God in them. They manifest the love of God in the community. I hope that through 2023 Hong Kong Special, Arise Hong Kong, we encourage each other. In the love of God, Arise Hong Kong. The theme for this year is Arise Hong Kong. Our guests for this year, Dr. Moses Chen, the Senior Consultant of PC Wu & Company. Dr. So Ka Sen, the former Secretary General, Hong Kong Examinations and Assessment Authority. Reverend Professor Emin Ng, the Head of Christian Ministry School, Gracia Christian College. Mr. Patrick Lip, the former Secretary for the Civil Service, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Government. Reverend Dr. Jason Yang, the former Director of Chinese Culture Research Center, China Graduate School of Theology. Dr. Louis Lok, the Director of Lucian Group Limited. Reverend Dr. Derek Lee, the former President of Christian Ministry Institute. Ms. Edith Shi, the Executive Director of CK Hutchison Holdings Limited. Pastor Alistair Ng, the Gospel Ministry Director of Media Evangelism. Reverend Dr. Peter Ho, the Founding Pastor of EFCC Tong Fook Church. Ms. Shelley Liu, the General Secretary of Family Development Foundation. Our Power 2023 Hong Kong Special, Arise Hong Kong. Our sharing guest for today is Reverend Dr. Jason Yeo, the former Director of Chinese Culture Research Center, China Graduate School of Theology. Reverend Jason Yeo, in an evangelistic meeting at secondary school, he committed to serve God for his whole life and dedicated to preach the gospel at school. Not only he uses the experience of pastoring churches to apply it on his theological teaching, he also uses simple ways to teach the words of God. He encourages us to well equip ourselves, to set a clear goal in God, care about our Hong Kong, to serve God faithfully. There is in store for us the crown of righteousness. Later in the program, Reverend Jason Young will share his testimony. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, 
brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Today, the message of Pastor Bobby Sher is Focus on the life goals given by God. We have all kinds of problems and difficulties in life. But Pastor Bobby Shere teaches us, don't blame on others. Turn our eyes, focus on Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus wants us to see possibilities and opportunities. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Pastor Bobby Shula advises, number one, focus on what we can control. Draw close to God and pray. Number two, focus on what we have and not what we have lost. Number three, focus on the solution and not the problem. And the solution for our life is Lord Jesus. Our life is full of opportunities and variable experience. So let's focus on the life goals given by God. God will change us, and then we will change the world. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Our program is bilingual broadcast. If your TV is the equipped Menachem facility, you can choose to watch our power in original English or Cantonese dubbing. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome visitors and church family. We're so happy you're in the house. Did you know our faith is limited by our knowledge? Lord, give us a deeper understanding of you today. Thank you for being here. We love you. Thank you for gathering with us and our family today as we worship the Lord on this good day. Thank you for inviting us if you're watching or listening into your car or into your home or wherever it is you are, and thank you to all of you who are here for being here in the house with us. It's such an honor to gather with God's people. And uh, I know God's going to do a great thing in your life today. You're going to leave this changed person. And that's what we're praying for. So let's pray. Father, we thank you and we love you. And we're grateful for your Holy Spirit that lives within us. Lord, we can change. We can leave here different. We can be completely transformed because we're with you. Help us to get a vision of who we can become today. And we ask it in the strong name of Jesus, all God's people said, amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you and so do I. In preparation for the message, Philippians 3.13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, which that can be hard for us to do sometimes, and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such view on things. And if on some point you think differently, that too, God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Amen.
Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. So happy that it's time again for Hour of Power 2023 special, a Rise Hong Kong special. Today I invite a good friend of mine. He's just returned to Hong Kong from Canada, Reverend Dr. Jason Young. Reverend Young, for many years, he had taught at various seminaries in Hong Kong, including Alliance Bible Seminary, China Graduate School of Theology. He was also the president of Ambrose Seminary in Canada. And today I'm so happy he comes to share with us on Hour of Power. Hello, Reverend Young. Hello. Reverend Young, I believe that in Hong Kong, many pastors or preachers were your students, attended your theological courses. Can you tell me about your faith journey? How did you receive God's calling? My faith journey was rough and rugged. When I was young, I lived in the Western District in Hong Kong. When I was in kindergarten, I went to church to hear the Bible. Very young at that time, when I was in primary six, I moved to Tai Po and attended the Chinese Rhenish Church Tai Po. Throughout the journey, though I was young, but I already felt the Bible was precious. It's true. So my faith journey was gradual. Gradually in the Bible, I read about the salvation of Jesus Christ. Yes. This was very important to me. I must mention that my secondary school was a Buddhist school because my family was poor at that time, could not afford to pay my tuition fee to study in English secondary school. My result of the entrance exam was very good. Waive half of my tuition fee. Later, even waive all my tuition fee. And I helped the school to do cleaning works. In this way, I completed my five-year secondary school. I got to know some little monks at school. We made good friends. Thus, I understand the teachings of Buddhism and their dedication to running a school. To me, it's really good. Of course, when I studied that school, I was a Christian already. Yes. I had the opportunity to preach the gospel at school and led my classmates to Christ, too. Thus, I realized that the gospel, the impact on folk religions or traditional Chinese religions, it's very, very powerful. Later, when I entered university, then I chose to study philosophy and Chinese culture. I especially realized, actually, Chinese culture is beautiful, and the gospel can complement and enrich it. To enrich and complement the Chinese culture, it also helps the older generation or people with traditional beliefs to know about Christianity. Mm. During your faith journey, how did you witness that God is true? How did the power of God manifest it to you? There are two aspects. Firstly, I personally experienced the power of prayer. Yes. I remember when I was young, one time on my way to school, I lost something, which was very important. I was scared. I prayed by the side of the road. This thing was very important for my family. If I lost it, I couldn't face my family. After prayer, I felt peace at my heart. With the peace inside, I went home and told my family. I lost that important thing. My family said it didn't matter. That thing was important, but it's outdated. You don't have to worry it. At that time, I just felt peace was really important. God listens to our prayers. Yes. Secondly is reading the Bible. I remember throughout the period in secondary school, I was serious to read the Bible, and I took notes yes. too. The Word of God gave me joy and power. Although I was not the first in the exam, but at school my teachers thought highly of me. Because of my testimony, some classmates came to know Jesus Christ. During that period, I felt that the Word of God, many times, kept encouraging me and helped me to face my challenges. Even on the issue of religious comparison, I can have humble attitude and wisdom to discuss with some Buddhist classmates about religion. We didn't argue, but respect and cherish each other. It is very precious. Thus, in a school with a different religious background, you could spread the gospel and also brought the classmates to Jesus. That's very thankful. 
The gospel is the power of God. Thankful. Very thankful. Can you tell me when you were called and dedicated yourself to study theology and became a preacher? When I was in Form 2, I was in the Hong Kong Bible Conference. I made my commitment to serve God all my life. My wife, who also yes. attended my church, she wanted to dedicate to God with me. I then headed towards this goal. I told God at that time, I hope to finish my degree first at the university, then study theology, because I thought I should dedicate my best to God. Yes. God listened to my prayer. I got married after graduation from university. My wife studied theology first. I went to study theology later. Actually, I took the evening courses, thus my first degree in theology, taking evening course. I taught at a secondary school for eight years and studied theology for six years in the evening. In addition to the first Master of Divinity degree, I also completed a diploma in education. After finishing six year of evening courses, I told my wife, I hope to be a pastor or theology professor in the future. Reverend Yung Muk Kuk was one of my oh, teachers. Reverend Young. He encouraged me a lot to further study in England. So after those eight years, I went to England with my wife to study theology and completed my doctoral degree at the University of London. And teach theology when you returned to Hong Kong? No. After graduated in theology, my teacher, who was a professor in England, one day he chatted with me. Jason, what is your plan after graduation? I've got my theology degree already. Of course, I will teach yes. at seminary or university. Went back to Hong Kong. My teacher was very nice, he said. The most important thing for a theologian is to pastor a church, he said, from university to university or from university to seminary. It's an easy road, but you need to put your theological studies into practice. Let people understand what you share. He encouraged me better to pastor in church. I said, okay, I take your word and see if God opens a path for me. That year, God did open a path, leading me to pastor a church in Canada, pastoring in Canada. The church asked me, why you come here pastoring our church? I said, because I want to be a good theology teacher in future. He said, then you are not really want to help me to pastor the church in the long run. I said, I'm sorry, I want to get pastoral experience <laughs> and to teach theology in the future. He said he had never had such interviewee like me. <laughs> I said, it's okay, let's put it in the hands of God. Later, he said, okay, I support your theological education in the future. I ended up to be there for eight years, helped to build and plant churches. The church now is still growing. In the pastoral process of the church, I noticed one thing. I studied a lot of knowledge about theology, and it is difficult to understand. How can the elderly and young people also understand? This is very important. Yes. How can it be practiced in real life? Yes. That eight years, God gave me the opportunity so that I could teach Sunday school in this church. I preached in fellowship. I led Bible study with elderly people. They all understood. Those eight years, God gave me good learning. I visited many elderly people. I also did a lot of visitation. This is important. I was the only pastor in that church. Thus, my first sermon was in English. The second one was in Cantonese and then was translated into Putonghua. All were preached by me. I also did a lot of visitation. Visitation is particularly important. We can understand the needs of the church members. This year was a good foundation to get to know the church. Thus, pastoral experience is very important to me. Yes. Preaching and caring ministry just only me, one person. Eight years later, God said to me, your desire is to teach theology. So eight years later, I left Otto and returned to Hong Kong. I first went to teach in Alliance Bible Seminary. Four years later, I continued to teach at the China Graduate School of Theology, but I didn't forget pastoring. I helped my mother church, Chinese Rhenish Church Taipo, to serve as senior pastor in my spare time, teaching on weekdays to preach in Chinese ministry. 
and began to pastor my church in year 2000. The church with less than 200 people grew to more than 600 after six years. Many people believed in Christ. Very thankful. It's not all my credit. My co-workers and I worked with a new pastoral direction so that the church flourished at that time. Very thankful. Mm. During pastoring, is there anything special to share with us? For example, you will encounter many people and things during pastoring. Christians will have weakness, they may be sick or with other difficulties, and have demands on pastors. What were the challenges along the way? A lot of people asked me when I did three ministries at the time. The first thing was to teach in seminary. Second, pastoring at church. Very often at lunchtime, I would chat with my co-workers. On Fridays, I especially spent half day and went to church for meetings. On Saturdays and Sundays, I preached and handled the errands of the church. Because I taught in seminary, I needed to write books and go to mainland for meetings to preach Chinese ministry because I was not full-time at the church. Thus, I had to be on the pulpit to provide the best message to brothers and sisters. Yes. Youth ministry and Sunday school. I assigned to other co-workers. But there was one ministry that couldn't be assigned. It's pastoring for church leaders. Because I've been in this church for many years, the people who grew up with me now become elders and deacons. The new co-workers couldn't handle this job. Yes. I had to pastoralize senior elders, deacons, and church leaders. It's not just about good working relationship with them, but also to mentor their spiritual needs. Provision. It's not just about provision, but also to have the courage to lead them. Let me give you an example. There was a deacon who loved the Lord, but I found that his tithing was little. Actually, he had high salary. No one dared to handle this case. Yes. I then said to him, Brother, I know you love the Lord, but why do you make so little tithing to mm. the church? <laughs> For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When I said that, I was scared too. Yes. The amount of my tithing, anything to do with you? I said, since you are a deacon, we serve the Lord, and we are to be role model. I put this item in my prayer. After I talked with him, he did changed. Yes. He said, yes. Pastor, thank you so much for your reminder. That year, he made his tithing a hundred times more mm. than he did. Mm. Afterwards, he fulfilled well in his tithing. I said, tithing is very important. I would not interfere if he is a layman at church. But for church leaders, definitely care more on them. I need to remind them this is my responsibility. If I didn't, who would remind him? In addition, the same apply to family problems. Very often, people is difficult to share family problems with others. It will take time to understand further. I needed to help these families and accompanied them to get through the problems. The problems about marriage and children. So in pastoring, courage and kindness both are equally important. You say it right. If you can become a professor of theology, to teach these practical experience to theological students, if you can have this pastoral experience. Yes. I totally agree, not only academically, but also theologically. Yes. At present, what we worried is, there are too much theories in theology. No practice. But no practice, then you couldn't be able to serve our sheep. The purpose of studying theology is to serve the sheep. Right. I know that later you were in Hong Kong, that is, more than 10 years ago, you went to Canada again. Yes. And set up a seminary. To start a seminary. Would you tell me more? During the process and its concept, how did God lead you? I went to Calgary in year 2012 to set up this seminary. The local Christians invited me. They invited me to be the president. There were three requirements. The language of teaching at this seminary is Putonghua. For the past 20 years, from year 2000, in the following some 10 years, many people from mainland China immigrated to Canada. Yes. These Chinese immigrants in Canada, 
very few Christians.、Yes. Most of them accepted Christ in Canada. Thus, we had to set up a Putonghua seminary to nurture、yes. them. When I taught at China Graduate School of Theology, I was director of Chinese Culture Research Center. I visited mainland China every year. Have meetings and trainings with churches in mainland China. Thus, had relatively ample experience in this aspect. Secondly, I have a doctoral degree. Thirdly, I am a pastor of the Alliance Church. When I was in Ottawa, I was a pastor of Alliance Church, and this seminary would be established under the Ambrose University College by Alliance Church. And I could meet these three requirements. So why did I accept this offer? When I retired in Hong Kong, I was 60 already. Retiring in Hong Kong is very comfortable. But because in the 1980s, when I was a pastor in Ottawa, I knew a lot of scholars went there for further study, and I witnessed them accept Christ. In my Putonghua church, there was a very enthusiastic Putonghua pastor. He led many mainland Chinese to Christ. Thus, the year I retired at age 60, year 2012, I went to Calgary to be their first president to train Putonghua pastors. Actually, we had trained many Putonghua pastors. They went back to different area of Canada to pastoralize churches. This was my last wish. Thus, theological training is now available in Cantonese and Putonghua. My last wish was fulfilled. It was so good, as what the Bible says: the harvest is ripe. How many people can be sent by God? <laughs> Very good. You responded to God's calling to serve them, and I believe this field is very large. Yes. Among the two million Chinese people, more than half of them speak Putonghua.、Hmm. Reverend Yang, you've served the Lord for so many years. To sum up, what do you want to share with us? What's so memorable to encourage our friends of Hour of Power and brothers and sisters, including those who want to study theology and dedicate themselves to the Lord in the future? This Bible verse, Revelation chapter three, verse eleven: "I am coming soon." Hold on to what you have, so that no one will take your crown. I think every believer today, God has prepared a crown for each one of them. And what is our hope? It is the return of the Lord. I often say the nature of church is off the ground. Off the ground does not mean not caring about the world. The church must care about the world, even lays down her life for the world. But the nature of church is to wait for the return of the Lord. Church is eternal, and when Christians believe in Christ. God prepares the crown for them to do our best to work for God, serve the Lord. We should wait faithfully for the return of the Lord. Don't let the world influence us. Our goal must be clear. We must hold on to what God has given us. In the end, God will give the crown to us. Thus, today, no matter how bad the situation is, no matter how, no matter where. Whether in Hong Kong or overseas. In short, with the presence of God, there is milk and honey. When you know God, wherever He put you, you serve Him faithfully. What God gives you, use them to serve God. It will be a land flowing with milk and honey that God gives you. The crown is ready for you. Thus, I return to Hong Kong this time, mainly. For retirement. Yes. Actually, I think there are many opportunities in Hong Kong, whether spreading the gospel or serving the Lord. Hong Kong has freedom and many opportunities. I even can say, for doing gospel work, maybe comparing with foreign countries, we have more freedom. I agree. This is my own personal experience. In Chinese community, some elderly people, when they believe in Jesus, they have peace in their hearts. Then they can rest in peace when they depart. There is no substitution. I give this example to illustrate. In fact, sometimes in some countries, you cannot do what you want. It's not that easy. Also, regarding education, the education in Hong Kong, even in government-aided schools, you can also have gospel fellowship. You can have evangelical meetings. You can check the law of some countries. Then you will know. Now Hong Kong still has many opportunities for spreading the gospel. Believers should work harder to serve God faithfully. With the presence of God, there will flow with milk and honey. Today, when we believe that God hasn't abandoned us, 
God has arranged us here in Hong Kong. We serve Him, and this will be the best place. No need to worry. The Lord is in charge and sitting enthroned. All things are in the hands of God. This is what I want to share today. The most important thing is to prepare for the return of the Lord. Otherwise, our crown will be taken away. Make good use of the freedom that Hong Kong has to continue to serve. Continue to serve. Keep it up. Amen. I'm so happy, Reverend Young. You can share with us today. We hope in the future, Reverend Young will come again on Hour of Power. Yes. To share with us your pastoring and your teachings, your heart for Hong Kong, and your heart for serving the Lord. I believe you will give us great encouragement. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks the Lord. Thanks the Lord. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Drawn to Christianity says, just lean and trust on God as a child would lean and trust on a loving father. And then build your life in response to that. And just do your best and forget the rest. And that's what we're going to do today. So today I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you understand how to build a better life, how to build a better vision, how to get better thinking, how to achieve your goals. But if we don't get this right, making Christ the center of everything that we do, and most of all, being at peace with God. And we've got, and everything else I'm going to talk about today kind of doesn't matter. Are you at peace with God? 
Look, praying a prayer is a good thing to do. Going to church is a good thing to do. Reading your Bible, it's all a good thing. But all you really have to do to be at peace with God is say, today I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. If you make that decision today, your life will never be the same and you'll be saved. And you'll know that when you get to the end of this, this life, a new life will begin. That's a promise. Will you make that decision today? I just want to pray for you and believe in your new journey. And it is a new journey. Imagine you find yourself in a rut. Your relationships aren't going well. Your marriage, you're not, it's not going well with your kids or your parents or your colleagues at work. Maybe you feel like you've been betrayed. Maybe you feel like your bank account isn't where you want it to be. Maybe you feel like things just aren't going the way you want to go. That's what I've done. I blame inflation. I blame the economy. I blame the government, politicians. I blame my boss. I blame my employees. I blame my negative relatives. I, I, I blame my, my bad hand I got dealt. And all of these things we can look at and blame. But those things are not really ever going to change. There's always going to be spring, summer, fall, and winter. But here's what can change you. People today love to say, people don't really change. Can I tell you something? That is false. Everybody is always changing. You've probably spent a little bit of money trying not to change. Right? On your face. <laughs> on your, you know, car. Who wants things to change, especially when they're going well? But the thing is, everything is always changing. Your body, your spirit, your mind, your thinking, your friends, your job. Everything's always changing. And you can either let it happen, and that will get you to the swamp, or you can decide how it's going to change. And the way you decide how it's going to change is by deciding the kind of thoughts you're going to think. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Jesus tells us, this is a very weird scripture, but there's a lot of wisdom. Jesus tells us, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your body will be full of light, but if your eyes are bad, your body will be full of darkness. What on earth does that mean? Sounds like some Greek philosopher or something, doesn't it? Picture this. You're sitting in a house with your friend and it's full of light, but the electricity is not on. It's just full of light. It's here in Southern California. You're like, oh, that's beautiful. And then all of a sudden, as you're talking to your friend, the room goes dark. And you look up and you see this thing in California we call a skylight. It's powered by nature. It's just a glass murky dome and it catches light. And when the sun is out, the whole house is full of light. But when the clouds come out, it gets dark. That's very much what Jesus is saying here, that your eyes are almost like a skylight to the house that is your body. That the things you focus on, the things you look at, and we could even say the things you listen to, the books you read, the goals you have, are going to shape whether your life is light or dark. Do you feel like your life is kind of dark right now? Do you feel like you don't have a lot of hope? Do you feel like you don't know where you're going? Do you feel like you could be in a different place? One place you can start by changing is changing the skylight. Did Jesus say all things are possible to those who believe? Did he? The answer is yes. Not only are they possible, he wants us to see those possibilities and believe in those possibilities and live for them. And it was Les Brown who said this great quote that helped him. I heard it in a song, actually. It says, where your focus goes, your energy flows. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. What we think about all day long is going to make a difference on how we feel. He's, I'm out of energy. Maybe you're focusing on things that are not good for you. Maybe. This is your friend Bobby talking. I don't know. But maybe if you begin to focus on the Lord, personal development, where I want to be in life, and positive things, whatever, says, as the Apostle Paul says, true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. If I focus on these things, I am letting light inside, and in that way I become the light of the world. You are the light of the world. 
You are the light of the world. Isn't that amazing that Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior of the world, didn't say in this passage, I am the light of the world. He said, what? You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. The world needs you. But to be a light, we have to get the light in for the light to go out. If you put junk in, trash will go out. If you put junk in, trash will go out. If you put light in, light will come out. Success will come out. Victory, opportunity, good friendships, good relationships. The whole kit and caboodle, you get heaven in, you get heaven out. That's it. And as Jesus said, heaven is what? Within you. What if that's true? You say heaven's not in me. Well, maybe we can get heaven in you today. Can we get heaven in you today? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And the way we get heaven in you is by changing our thinking. Now, this is what Paul tells us to do. Paul is an amazing man. If you haven't heard of him, he wrote many of the books in the New Testament. One of the books that he wrote is Philippians. The book of Philippians is called the Epistle of Joy. It's a book about joy, about how to be a joyful, happy person. And guess where Paul was when he wrote this epistle? He was in this place, a dark, dungy cell. It wasn't good. And yet Paul, who was there, was talking about how joyful he was, how joyful he was. Why was he joyful? Well, when Hannah read the scripture today from Philippians chapter 3, we see that the joy was set before him because he had a goal, the goal, the goal that was before him. Let's, re let's look at this together. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I've already obtained all this or already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Everybody say, forget what's behind. <laughs> Can you control the past? You cannot control the past. You can't change the past. You can't do anything about it, but you can, you can press on. You can just forget it and do what? Strain toward what is ahead and press toward a goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. Can we just say today, Paul was paying a big price. He was in prison. He was maybe sick. He'd been, I mean, Paul beyond prison was shipwrecked, beaten, rejected, lied about. Uh, had ch churches that he planted and poured into, stolen from him. He was, people betrayed him. And yet, here he is, full of joy. Did Paul fake it? That's a good question. Did Paul fake it? The answer is no. What did Paul have that we need today? He had a goal. He had a vision. He had a reason to get up in the morning. He was paying a price, but for Paul, it was worth it. If, if the price is clear, the price is worth it. If you can see where you're going, you'll be willing to pay the price. This is the power of a goal-oriented life. You only become as big as your biggest goal. You only become as big as your biggest goal. So for a moment here, we begin to understand our philosophy or we begin to understand how important or how much our daily thoughts and disciplines are affecting our outside life. How by what we consume and what we think about is, is a great indicator of what our future is gonna be like. Your present thoughts are gonna dictate your future. So, Think about what you think about. Sounds like, sounds like Dr. Seuss, doesn't it? Think about what you think about. You go to the dentist sometimes to get your teeth cleaned, and you go to the mechanic sometimes to get a tune-up on your car. Sometimes, it's maybe every six months or so, we ought to take a look at our thoughts and tune them up. We're going to do that today because we ought to ask, what kind of life are my thoughts creating? If you think about your life and where it is right now, your philosophy is perfectly designed to give you the results you're getting. Your way of thinking, the way you spend your free time, 
The patterns you keep in your life, they're all perfectly designed to give you the results you're getting. So here's three ways you can tune up your thinking that are going to lead to more victory in your life. Here's the number one thing, first thing. Focus. Let me ask you a question first. What do most people focus on? Do they focus on what they can control or what they can't control? Like when you're obsessing and you're turning and tossing at night, are you thinking about what you can control or what you cannot control? What you cannot. These are the things that we spend a lot of time thinking about. And where your focus goes, your energy flows. What happens when we pour our focus into things we can't control? We just feel tired. If you feel tired, you're not going to be able to do a lot for God. So focus, number one, is focus on what you can control. Maybe you were just told that, you know, you have some sickness or almost worse, that you have someone you love who's sick. What can I, how can I control that? Well, here's what I can control. I can go to the doctor appointments. Here's what I can control. I can pray about it. Here's what I can control. I can become the kind of dad, kind of husband, kind of son, and the kind of friend that the people I love need. I can stop focusing on what I can't control, and I can focus on what I can control. Do healthy things today. Become a healthier person. In our relationships, you know, there's lots of things we can't control, like everyone. There's no one you can control except who? Except me. If you got a pen, write this down. I cannot control my spouse. <laughs> you can try. You can try. But you can't control your spouse. Your goal is to be the best spouse ever. And you give it about six months, right? When you plant in spring, it takes about six months for harvest to come. Give it about six months and you'll start to see your spouse will change if you change. It's not going to get better until you get better. You could, the only thing you can, tr- can control is you. Listen to the sermons, make the changes, pray the prayers, become the person that brings those things into your life. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. Number two, focus not on what you've lost, focus on what you have. Focus on what you have. Here's something Dr. Schuler taught me. Always look at what you have left, never at what you have lost. Easier said than done. Join the team. We're all human. We all make these mistakes. Look, we make it too complicated. If you're friends with Jesus, he's going to let you in. It's just that simple. You don't have to get everything right. If you know the Lord and the Lord knows you, he'll say, well done, come on in. More importantly, our goal is not to just get to heaven when we die. It's to get heaven in us now so we can be a light in a dark world. Let the light in through the window. So... Number one, focus on what you can control. Number two, focus on what you have, not what you've lost. And number three, focus on the solution, not the problem. Can I just tell you that, yeah, you might have some short-term solutions and problems, but over the long term, the solution for your life is Christ in you. That is the solution. Little disciplines every day to make a big difference. The solution is to work hard on you. Work harder on you than anything else in the world. Every day, do a little bit of work to become a better version of you, to become more like Christ, to take the scripture seriously, to take the wisdom given to you by your parents and your grandparents and the people you admire and your mentors, to really live it out, to have a clear picture of who you want to become, and devote all your thought and all of your focus into that. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. Don't ask the Lord to make life easy. Ask him to make you better. Don't ask Lord to, the Lord to make life less scary. Ask him to give you more courage. Don't ask the Lord to make life less confusing. Ask him to give you more knowledge and understanding of the world. Don't ask him to change the world. Ask him to change you and you'll change the world. That changes everything. And that's the good news. And here's the last thing I learned from my my grandpa Schuler. Don't get through the day. Get from the day. Don't get through the day. Get from the day. The day is full of interesting people and opportunities. 
beautiful things, amazing experiences. Don't waste a day by sleeping in. Don't get through a day, get from a day. Every day has a gift made available to make you a more godly, more awesome, more powerful, and a more interesting and attractive person. And you can do all of those things, not just tomorrow, not just the next day, not just a month from now. You can do those things today. That's good news. Here's something you can do at the end of every day. Before you go to bed, you lay down in bed, you rest your eyes, you take some deep breaths, put, make sure your phone has been gone in another room. Just don't even have it. And pray, ask the Lord to show you your day and just do like a football rewind of your whole day, you know, going from beginning to end, the people you met, the things you learned, the positive and negative experiences you had, your high, your low, things like that. Think through the day and you will get so much more out of your day. You'll carry the previous day into your next day and you'll see things will get better. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name to give us the kind of focus, whatever is good and noble and praiseworthy and pure and excellent, all of these things. We, we want to see those things. Lord, we ask that you develop us into the kind of people you want us to be. Thank you, God that we always change and we choose today to change the people you want us to be. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Christ's name we pray. All God's people said, amen. the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching our Power in Your Support to us. Our sharing guest for next week will be Dr. Louis Luke the director of Lucion Group Limited. Stay tuned. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Today, the message of Pastor Bobby Sher is focus on the life goals given by God. We have all kinds of problems and difficulties in life. But Pastor Bobby Sher teaches us, don't blame on others. Turn our eyes, focus on Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus wants us to see possibilities and opportunities. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Pastor Bobby Schiller advises, Number one, 
Focus on what we can control. Draw close to God and pray. Number two, focus on what we have, and not what we have lost. Number three, focus on the solution, and not the problem. And the solution for our life is Lord Jesus. Our life is full of opportunities and variable experience. So let's focus on the life goals given by God. God will change us, and then we will change the world. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Our Power This Motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVB Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning, and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on My TV Super or www.hourofpower.org.hk. Thanks for joining. God loves you, and see you next week on TVB Pearl. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power. And Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future.